uh, over the uh, uh, Facebook. Amen. Hallelujah. Did I put everything away that I wasn't supposed to put away? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We ready? Amen. I'm just going to give you a greeting in my own words this morning. Of course, uh, we thank God for Abiding Faith Christian Center. And Pastor Rodney and I, we are so delighted that you decide to join us on today. Amen. Y'all know what our mission is, our vision is. And I'm going to get this paper back out so I'll make sure I say it the right way. Excuse me. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, praise the Lord. Our mission is establishing, empowering and maturing lives to fulfill God's divine purpose. Our vision is through the teaching and preaching of the word. We will reach the lost, give hope to the hopeless, bring restoration to backsliders, minister healing to the afflicted. We will bring believers to spiritual maturity, enabling them to impact this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And of course, Abiding Faith Christian Center. We are located in the Great Lakes Business Center, and that's 1428 West Court Street, Flint, Michigan, 48503. Everyone is welcome to join us for our services, Sunday morning Bible school at 10 a.m., Sunday morning worship at 11 a.m., and of course, Thursday night Bible study at 6 p.m. Everyone is welcome. Well, I am taking the place today of Pastor uh, Rodney Hamer, a man. Of course, I'm Patricia Hamer, and we're going to get into the Word of God on today. And I'm going to continue in the lesson. I'm okay. I need, okay. I'm going to uh, continue in the lesson that uh, Pastor started on how to let your light shine, understanding how to let your light shine in darkness. And I got to find the right paper. Amen. Hallelujah. While I'm doing that, why don't we say hi to Pastor? Everybody just say hi, Pastor. Hi, Pastor. <laughs> because he is, uh, Pastor is watching. I'm getting like, Pastor, what I do in my paper? <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny, I'm doing the intro. I know the intro and it just, whoop. amen. So uh, anyway, understanding why we study the scriptures and we're going to uh, delve into that. And that's not the right one either. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Did I leave my paper in my bag? Check that for me. If I left my paper... Let me see my bag. If I left a folded up paper, I was sure I stuck it in my Bible. Did I stick it in there? If not, I know what to do. Praise God. Amen. I know Pastor was probably looking like, what you doing, girl? <laughs> Amen. Let's turn to John. Oh, I know exactly where it is right now. Okay. Let's turn to uh, St. John and let me get the scripture. Pastor has been ministering on uh, talking about uh, why we need to walk in the light. Amen. Being the light in the darkness. That's what pastor has been ministering on. And so what I'm going to do, uh, he uh, ended up a little bit talking about how we, how we uh, manifest that light by walking in love. Amen. And that's what we're going to talk about today uh, is walking in love, letting our light shine through the love of God. And let me... Uh, Get my scripture, John. Uh, mm -mm, nope, I got, I got it. Here we go. All right. Let's turn to John 15. John 15. Praise the Lord. That's why it's a blessing to have the word on the inside of you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. John 15. And we're going to start at the 12th verse. Amen. John 15 and 12. 
And uh, we're talking about letting our light shine in darkness. And today we're going to talk about how to let our light shine by love. The love of God on the inside of us. And uh, we all know from the scripture that God is love. Hallelujah. And he is light. And in him, there is no darkness. So God is love. And if God put his spirit on the inside of us, that means that we have the capacity to love the way that God loves. Amen. Amen. I have heard people say before, well, I'm not Jesus. Amen. No, but you have Jesus living on the inside of you and you have the capacity to love the way that God wants you to love because you have him on the inside of you because the scripture said that he is love. Amen. And so therefore we can do it. Let's look at John 15 and 12. John 15 and 12. Everybody there? And what I'm going to talk about first is the relationship of believers to each other, how we're supposed to love one another. Amen. Look at this. It says, this is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. Can I say that one more time? He said, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to love each other the same way that he loves us. And you know, God, he loves us so much. You know what? Quickly turn to 1 Corinthians 13. Because I don't want you to be confused about what love is. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians 13. I call this the love chapter. Amen. Chapter uh, verse four, first Corinthians 13 and four. It says charity or love suffered long. Look at this. It's kind. It envieth not. It vaunted not itself. It means it does not put it, push itself forward. That's what that means. It's not puffed up does not behave itself unseemly does not behave itself unseemly you got manners amen <laughs> and you know how to act you know how our parents used to tell us now you know how to act and you better act that way when you leave this house <laughs> It's not seeketh not her own, does not try to push itself forward, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. And I want to go back a little bit to seeketh not her own. That means, you know, and, and I've said a little bit in Sunday school, the days and time that we live in, the Bible says that men would be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. And we have to, as, as believers, as Christians, we have to make sure that we don't get swept away in that and think it's all about you because it's not all about you. It's all about him. The Bible says that we have been bought with a price, that we are not our own anymore. We have been bought with a price. We are children of the king. God is our father and we do what he tells us to do. And we do not uh, just think about ourselves. And you know what? We have to do that sometimes on purpose. Because I can remember, I, I thank God that I had an experience for uh, eight years of being single. That was my first time really being single, being a grown person. And sometimes when you're single, you can um, uh, get caught up in just you. Because all you got to think about is you. Especially if no kids in the house and stuff, all you got to think about is you. And we have to, on purpose, venture out and think of somebody else. Amen? We have to, on purpose, help others. We have to, on purpose, not always think about how, oh, uh, well, how is this going to affect me? You know what I'm saying? And I'm not, y'all know I'm not talking about wrong stuff. 
I'm talking about in God's eyes, what God wants us to do, because we are supposed to be directed by God. And in, he says in the Bible, in all thy ways, that's Proverbs three, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct thy paths in all thy ways. Anything that you're supposed to do, you ask him, Lord. I need your direction in this. Tell me what to do. We should not be making our own decisions about what to do in life and dealing with other people. We need to seek the Lord and say, Lord, what do you want me to do? And sometimes we make so many decisions that are selfish decisions because it's causing us to go out of our way to do something. But have you asked God? Lord, is this what I'm supposed to do? And in order to operate in love, we want to do what God wants us to do. We want to operate in love. Amen. And it says, seek it not our own. It's not easily provoked. Think it no evil. Look, look at this. It's not ready to suspect evil. Do you know there are people that always look inside out at folk? And a lot of that comes from you have been hurt in life. OK, I'm not saying all of it, but a lot of it comes from being hurt in life. And then you start looking at other people through the eyes of that pain or through the eyes of that hurt. And so you cannot see clearly because it's like you look and I'm just going to use this for an example. You looking through a filter and God wants you to look through his eyes the way he sees it, uh, that the way that he sees it. Amen. Think of no evil. We should be we should be quick to believe the best when you see somebody or if they do something that you don't think uh, fits that don't fit your fancy. Don't always think evil about it. Don't always uh, think that, oh, they must be doing something wrong or they doing this. The Bible says think it no evil. And, and in my uh, uh, definition, this guy is not ready to suspect evil. Because I've been around folk that, I mean, just straight go negative. Not even look at the whole picture. <laughs> just go straight negative. Amen. Hallelujah. And we want, you know what I ask God, Lord, let me see things the way you see them. And the way we do that is through the word, through love. Because sometimes God, will, sometimes, not God, sometimes our flesh will tell us, okay, you know what, don't fool with them. You know what I'm saying? But check with the Lord about what you're supposed to do. I'm not talking, y'all know I ain't talking about abuse or nothing like that. I ain't talking about that. But check with the Lord and find out what you're supposed to do. Amen? Because sometimes we toss people away too quick. Just because our feelings got hurt. Amen? And y'all know we talked about in Sunday school, uh, um, uh, if your feelings get hurt like that, check your own self. Ask your own self why that happened like that. So let me go on because I, I want to get through this. It says rejoice not in iniquity. So you don't get happy about wrong and you don't get happy about, you know how sometimes somebody may do you wrong and then something happens to them and you like, yeah, I knew God was going to get them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that should not be our attitude. Amen. Our attitude should be humility. Actually, if somebody actually comes against you, because sometimes that can be perceived. If somebody comes against you, you pray for them. Isn't that what God told us to do? He said, pray for our enemies. Yes, he did. Ooh, I tell you, God's way is different, ain't it? <laughs> Amen. It says, uh, uh, rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Beareth all things. Believeth all things, hope all things, endureth all things. Amen. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things. We should be so forbearing with one another. Because, and I, I'm going to get into this later, but I'm going to mention to it now. That's how the world will know that we are Christ's disciples. It's through our love one for another. That's how the world will know. Because think about this. And the world no fake. Do y'all know that? The world no fake. 
when when people get in gangs or get uh, this is from what I've read. When people get in gangs or get with the wrong crowd, many times they're searching for somebody to accept them. Amen. And can you imagine if we as believers accept and love one another, no matter what, just love on one another. And then the world sees that, how we love one another. And then they'll say, wow, I want what they have. And then when God brings in people that are different from us, amen, we just love on them no matter what. Hallelujah. And that will win them to Christ. Amen. Because there are a lot of people that are in the world, they don't know nothing about Jesus. Nothing. So what they'll do, they'll read our lives. Amen. They'll see how we interact. And they'll make a decision about Jesus. I don't want my life to get in the way of somebody receiving Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So, uh, and go ahead. I, I finished that. So y'all know what love is now, right? I know this ain't y'all first time hearing it, but it's just a reminder. Okay. Uh, it says, uh, uh, this is my commandment, 12 verse. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Okay, we love like Jesus love. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Amen. And there are times, let me give you an example. There are times that we may need to lay down our life for somebody else. And just a simple example, maybe somebody need a ride to church. And it may be out your way. You may have to go a whole different way. Amen. And that's a part of laying down your life. You know why I say that? Because you got to leave a little bit earlier than what you planned on leaving. You know what I'm saying? When you get out of church, you may have your routine of what you do, but you lay down your life and then you go and do go and take them back home. You lay down your life when you take somebody to lunch. And I don't mean they have to be a Christian. Take them to lunch. So they can see the love. Sometimes you got to show the love before you can speak to them about Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. But we need to show it to each other first. It said, ye are my friends. Oh, greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends. If you do whatsoever, I command you. Listen to this. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. That's what Jesus called us. For all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. So, so God takes away the secrecy. He's our friend because we tell our friends. We talk to our friends. Amen. Look at this. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. And he's just reminding us of how much he loved us. He started out uh, that way and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the father in my name, he may give it to you. And look at what he says right after that. These things I command you that you love one another. That is how the world is going to know about Christ is our love one toward another. And that's the way that you cause your light to shine is that we have love one toward another. And I know we've heard sermons on love and sometimes we think we just walking in love and we the most lovable people in the world. But your love walk, you have to examine that and check that every day, your love walk, amen. amen. That's how people are gonna know that we are his disciples indeed by our love one toward another. Amen. Let's turn over to First uh, John. First John. 
Ooh, hallelujah. Don't you guys, don't you all um, love the way God loves us? And he loves us so much that he wants us to love each other like that. Amen. He set the perfect example of how we are to love one another. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I'm getting the uh, scripture. And it says in uh, um, this. Oh, God is so good. Amen. Look at First uh, John four and seven. First John four and seven. It said, beloved. Isn't that an endearing term? He said, beloved, look at how God is concerned about this, y'all. Let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God. Or uh, it says born of God comes from God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. And that's why that's why we have to demonstrate the love of God. And when we don't demonstrate the love of God, that means that we don't really know him. And, you know, some things in the word of God, they are black and white. You don't have to go to the Greek and Hebrew, like I said before, to figure it out. It's right there. It's plain. He said, let us love one another for love is of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. You can be born again and not know God. Amen. And how do you get to know God? I need some answers. How do you get to know God? <laughs> you get to know God through his word. And if you don't know the word, you can't know God. This is God. I talked about that a little bit this morning. That's why I didn't want to keep on it. But if you don't know the word, you don't know God. That's why a pastor is so adamant about when he gives you the word, he tells you where the scripture is. That's why he likes to go line up a line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, so that you can see the word for yourself, so that you'll know that it's just not pastor saying it, or it's just not me saying it, but it's God speaking to you. Amen. Amen. Because God gave his word. This, these words come from God. And this is not, you don't have to go away saying, well, Pastor Pat said this, or Pastor uh, Rodney said this. No, you can go away and say, God said. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Hallelujah. You want to get to know him. Hallelujah. You know him by his word. And once you get to know God, you, I'm telling you, just become love. Hallelujah. God is on the inside of you. And like I said, you have the capacity to love the way that God loves. And sometimes we have confessed, well, hmm, I ain't doing that. I can't do that yet. Or uh, God, you know, we use excuses. God ain't done working on me yet. You know, stop using excuses for not acting like God. <laughs> Amen. Because you have the capacity to love like God. And that's how we let our light shine for the world is our love one toward another. I mean, because of social media and internet and things like that, you see so much division in the body of Christ. We knew it existed before all of this happened, but it wasn't, stuff wasn't spread so prevalent. But now because of the internet and social media, I mean, sometimes people have a free for all on ministers, on pastors, on other believers, just a free for all. And y'all, can I tell y'all something? Y'all can do what y'all want to do, but let me tell you something. Don't comment when they talking about folk. 
Don't comment on that. Amen. Because you know you read what you saw. So if somebody have a comment about you, sometimes you think, okay, did I, am I reaping or is this the devil? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. You have to ask yourself that. We have to watch what we say, especially on these social media sites, because it goes all over the world. Somebody can put something on there and ruin somebody's reputation for the rest of their life. God can still bless them. And do you know we're going to be held accountable for that? And that's your brother and sister. So let's don't abide in faith, Christian Center and y'all that's watching on Facebook or YouTube, let's don't be guilty of bashing other believers. I mean, we shouldn't be bashing folk anyway. Somebody say amen. amen. We shouldn't be bashing folk anyway. Not believers. I remember that mic there. <laughs> Not believers. And you may feel some kind of way, but you know, you don't put all your feelings out on for everybody to see. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Some, some things, because I, I love Facebook, y'all. I love it because it, it helps me to um, uh, keep in contact with people I haven't kept in contact with. When I lived out of state, uh, me and my family, you know, they, they post the pictures on Facebook. Facebook is fantastic. Social media is fantastic for the right thing. Social media allows us right now to broadcast. Amen. It's a blessing but you could also use it for the wrong thing. That's the way the devil is though, ain't he? Yes. He can take something that's so good and make evil out of it. But we don't want to be guilty. We don't want to be guilty of doing anything like that. Amen. That's love. That's love. And you may even think that. Amen. Hallelujah. But that don't mean you got to say it. Amen. Because we do read what we sow. That's what we got to remember. Amen. And I didn't got off a little bit, but I'm going back on. Amen. But sometimes we need to be reminded of that, of how we act just not in front of people. Because what that does is it exposes what's in your heart. And that means that stuff is in your heart. Amen. And sometimes we've gotten in a habit of doing certain things that we're really not operating in love. Y'all, we saw what love was, right? And we, but we've gotten in certain habits that God, um, that, that, that we need to break through the word of God. If you stay in your word, well, that word will correct you. You know, you ain't even have to, uh, um, I don't know about y'all, but a lot of times, <clears throat> excuse me, when God is dealing with me about something or, there, there may be something in there. Pastor may end up ministering on. I'd be like, oh, okay, Lord, you know, <laughs> that means you got to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? That, that's, that's the way that works. Amen. God, what, what he's trying to do, he's trying to take us to a higher level of love. When we get rid of ourselves and let God arise, we sing the song, let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. Let God arise in you. Let the love of God arise in you. Amen. So that the enemies of your soul can be scattered. Hallelujah. Like I said, we always, a lot of times we always trying to bind the devil and Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus. And, and that's true. We have to do that sometimes, but take care of the enemy that's working with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's get strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. Glory to God and walk the way that God wants us to walk. I heard, uh, 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 I think it was Joyce Meyer say this morning, and, and it, it resonated in my uh, spirit that she, she made a statement. She said, if, if uh, believers, if believers were loving each other the way that we're supposed to love in, in, you know, in the midst of congregation, when we run into each other, then there would be a lot more people that would be saved. And you know what? I agree with that. Because they will see a difference in us. Amen. Our love walk. So God wants to let our, he wants our light to shine. Showing our love one toward another. Amen. And I think as the body of Christ, we got to deal with that. Sometimes, sometimes we just, you know, 
some sweet stuff under the rug and I'm this, I'm that. Y'all, this is a daily walk and we have to allow the word to uh, change us. Amen. It says, so he that loveth knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifested, the love of God toward us. Uh, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him here in his love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. In other words, he paid for our sins. Look at number 11. It says, beloved, if God, see, there you go, calling us beloved again. <laughs> if God so loved us, what does it say? We love also to love one another. Yes. If God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. And that's when you come to that realization of how much God loves you, it'll be easier to look over the faults of one another. Because God looked over so much to deal with. Think about how you were five years ago. Prayerfully, you different than you different today than you were five years ago. But you know what? God looked over a whole bunch of stuff to get you where you are today. Amen. Amen. Oh, I tell you what, if God judged us the way sometimes we judge each other, we'd be hit. <laughs> <laughs> And he said, he wrapped it up. He said, beloved, if God so loved us, we also, uh, we ought also to love one another. Amen. Let's turn. Uh, um, okay. Let, I, let's jump down real quick. And then I got a scripture I want to go back to. Cause so look down, look down uh, at uh, verse 21. Oh, how, oh, oh, gee. Let's look at 20. Okay. If a man say, I love God and hated his brother. Remember we talked about that word hate this morning? Hate, when I forgot which dictionary it was in. It say to love less. Ooh. That's sticky, ain't it? As, as they say, it's tight, but it's right. That's, that's what you call walking down the narrow road. <laughs> he says, if a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother. And y'all know believers, he ain't talking about your, your blood brother. Okay, which we know we're supposed to love them anyway. <laughs> whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he have not seen? There's no way your love. You can't you. You don't love God like you think you love God when you have ought against your brother or sister. Or if if y'all remember, I said before, if somebody come around you and, and you say you love everybody and somebody come around you and you'd be like, you know, in your heart, it'd be like. Ugh. <laughs> and you know what? It is. It is. It is amazing uh, because. Sometimes, especially if you're spiritual minded, mature, and sometimes it don't have to be that, you can tell immediately, oh, they got something against them. You know what I'm saying? But that shouldn't be so among us. If you ever feel that, when somebody comes around you, you need to check your love. Amen. You need to deal with your own heart and don't ever feel like you have a right to not love. You never have a right to not love because God is love and he lives on the inside of us. Hallelujah. That means love. That means love is on the inside of me and I got, I have the capacity to love. Oh, I tell you what, when you walk that out and there are going to be some times, there are going to be some times that you are going to be challenged with that. Let me tell you if, you, if you haven't already. And even after that, after you're challenged with it, amen, because God is going to give you opportunity to uh, walk out what you say you believe. You're going to have an opportunity. I mean, uh, the enemy will present opportunities <laughs> for you to walk out what you say you believe. And thank God 
that you can do it because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So you can do it. And yes, you're going to have to tell that flesh to be quiet. <laughs> no, so you will not think that way. No, mind you, I have the mind of Christ. These are the things that I think on. That's how you have to do it. You have to, when those things come against you, you have to repeat the word back to it. No, nope, I have the mind of Christ. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. These are the things I'm thinking on. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are of good report. Think on these things. And sometimes you got to quote that scripture over and over and over because there have been times when I wasn't thinking the right thing. And I'll tell you what, it was like y'all, y'all, y'all remember them cartoons where the devil be on one side. And, uh, <laughs> and so, you know, these thoughts running through my mind and I was like, and I caught myself because I made sure that I'm going to keep my mind and you will not do what you want to do. I have the mind of Christ and that's what I will do. I call, uh -uh, no, 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 I'm not thinking about that. Whatever things are lovely, true, uh, good report. Uh, I'm, that's what I'm going to think on. Greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. Then I'm good. Because one time I actually did this, I was driving. This ain't been too long ago. I'm driving and I'm driving, you know, them thoughts, especially if you get concerned about something, those thoughts try to come back to your mind. Nope, I'm not thinking about that. No, I have the mind of Christ. You have to say that word. That's why you got to know the word. That's what Jesus told the devil, the word. He didn't tell him. He said, oh, Satan, get out of my face. He didn't say that. Satan wouldn't think about that. There wasn't no power in that. <laughs> Hallelujah. He gave him the word. And that's what we have to put in our minds, the word. We have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And they can, nothing else takes the place of putting the word of God in your spirit. Amen. Nothing takes the place of that. Of you setting your eyes on that word. Thank God we can listen to it. And I, I believe God, people that are, uh, don't have their sight, I thank God that they could hear it. Amen. But when you have your sight, amen, get in that word. And don't, let me tell you, don't do this because in my early days of being a believer, I knew I was supposed to read the word and I knew I was supposed to read it every day so that I can walk in it. Okay. And so it's like, I went in there, got my word and it was like, read my word today. You know what I'm saying? Did I remember anything? Not all the time. No, I'm just doing a check mark saying I read my word. But when you get in that word, you need to get in there and feast on the word of God. When God give you a scripture, God is love. God is love. OK, let me look that up and see what love is. First Corinthians 13. OK, that's what love is. OK. Oh, yeah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You go back and you rehearse those scriptures and you make sure when you walk away that you walk away with something. Amen. If you struggling in any area, if you struggling in your love walk, because we're talking about love today, get in the word and read those scriptures on love. Meditate on those scriptures on love. Get you a few scriptures. Amen. And write them down. Amen. That's what I do sometimes. If it's, if it's something that I'm focusing on, I write those scriptures down. I got papers of different scriptures. Actually, I got a booklet. Uh, um, that has scriptures on different things. You pray the word. That's what that's what I do. Pray the word. Amen. And so that keeps you walking in love. And that's what we want to do. Saints. We want to walk in love and we want to so that we can love each other so that the world can see that we are disciples of Christ so that they can desire what we have so that we can be a light in darkness. Whether you're on the job, in the doctor's office, wherever you are, make sure that you're always walking in love, that your light is shining through your love walk. When we go to doctor's offices and dentist's office, whatever, we don't go in complaining. Amen. Hallelujah. Even in your mind, you may be thinking, oh, Lord, this is taking longer than what I thought. Everything don't need to be said. Right. Amen. 
<laughs> Amen. Start talking to somebody about the Lord. Start singing uh, uh, songs. Start uh, what I do. You, you, everybody got cell phones. Get your, get your phone out. Start going over your scriptures. That's what I used to do sometime when uh, I get stopped by a train. Instead of saying, oh, man, I wish this train hurry up. I just going, I'm getting myself all worked up. So you know what? If I, I, if I have a book in the car, I'll start reading scriptures in my, in my phone. Uh-huh, take that devil. I ain't getting upset. No, I'm going to sit here and do something that's going to build me up. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That helps you to walk in love. Amen. It says, uh, uh, if a man say, I love God and hate his brother, he is a liar. Now, I didn't call you a liar. The Bible did. <laughs> so don't say, uh -huh. I don't know how she can call me a liar. No, the Bible says, if a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he have not seen? And this commandment, look at here, here go again. And this commandment have we from him that he who love God loves his brother also. Amen. That should stir you up. And it also should cause us to think, to make sure, Lord, I'm gonna check my love walk. I'm gonna take this word in and I, I just challenge you this week, just start reading the scriptures on love. See how much God loved you. And that'll cause you to have more compassion on other people. That'll cause us to not be so judgmental when dealing with each other and, and seeing one another's faults. Because if you worship together, you're going to see other folk faults. Okay? And that, that keeps us from being so judgmental. Amen. Because you got some faults. If you, if you didn't know it. <laughs> you, know, you know why I say that? Because um, God uh, causes us to grow. He said, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Okay. So when you grow, that means you have to correct some things or you have to mature in things that you weren't mature in before. OK, so that means there were some things that that you weren't doing quite right, but God didn't expose them yet because he working on this right here. OK, and then you get that. He going to cause you to grow and then he's going to expose something else and he wants you to work on that and then grow. That's what he does. That's why we have to be patient with one another because you don't, I don't know, you don't know. As pastors, we, there are some things that we can see, okay? Um, but um, as, as believers, we don't know where the person is in the process. We don't. Amen? Hallelujah. And when you speak, make sure you're speaking in love. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all being blessed by the word. <laughs> hey, the word blesses me even when I got to say, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Amen. It's in this commandment have we from him uh, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Amen. Let's turn to Matthew uh, 18. Ooh, hallelujah. I am excited. That's, that's, um. Uh, let's see if I got the right one. Okay, Matthew. Okay, uh, Matthew 22 and 37. Matthew 22 and 37. Y'all getting a love lesson today. <laughs> and you know what? That love lesson, this love lesson not only helps with each other, but it helps in your daily life. 
It does. It helps with relationships with one another because we need to have relationships with people. God did not make us to be on our own. We need to have relationships uh, with people. Jesus had relationships. He had 12 folk following him around all the time. <laughs> that was with, ain't that an example? He had 12 people with him all the time. Of course, he had his alone times, but Jesus had 12 people with him all the time. Can you imagine that? Praise the Lord. <laughs> he had 12 people. So Jesus set the example. Amen. You know what? You need to have somebody in your life that is uh, helping you or mentoring you. And you also need to have somebody in your life that you are discipling. Amen. But you cannot disciple if you don't know the word. Amen. Because you'll teach them the wrong thing. And you cannot disciple. Because if you're discipling somebody, that means they're going to be around you sometime. Amen. So you cannot disciple if you're not walking in love. Because they'll see your reaction. And they'll start thinking, oh, maybe that's okay. You know what I'm saying? So we want to walk in love, number one, toward another, and then uh, toward, toward the world. I said Matthew 22 and 37. Jesus said unto him. Okay, come on, let's read this together, these few verses. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. So hold up. That means ain't nothing left, is it? Amen. <laughs> so we should be love walking. Amen. Look at, okay, let's go on, 38. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. See, he compared that to that. Look at this. Thou, come on, let's read it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. On these two commandments. Woo, hallelujah. <laughs> you know how you get excited when you got something? Listen. On those two commandments, hang all the promises, everything. Because God is love. His word is love. And if you're following God, you're following the word, you're following love, you're going to have a prosperous life. Because all the commandments hang up on that. Amen. Everything in God hangs on love. So if you're walking in love, you will have a prosperous life. If you're walking in love, you will, because he say, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So if you're walking in love, you'll do God's commandments. And God's commandments is to love one another and be good to those of the household of faith, to love your brethren. So you're walking in God, you're walking in love, and then it tells you how to treat those without. Those that despitefully use you, uh, 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 what was that? One of them, uh, if somebody slap you on the cheek, then turn the other cheek to them. Y'all yeah. looking like, oh, I ain't there yet. <laughs> and, and let me tell you something. That, that don't have to necessarily mean somebody just come up and slap you, okay? Somebody can say something to you that feels like a slap in the face. That don't mean you have to say something back. Amen. And if we get that revelation and let God be our defense, amen, hallelujah, then God will take care of the situation. And what you do, what you do is you love them anyway. Amen. And he said, because sometimes we'll take that scripture and use, um, uh, okay, uh, coals. A fire up on their head. Help me find that. When uh, um, uh, when you treat them right, that it'll it's like uh, putting coals. Uh, yeah. Okay, y'all help me help me find that scripture real quick. Uh, coals. Somebody got that. Somebody got that phone. Look it up real quick. Cause I, it's not in the back of my Bible. But when he talks about loving our enemy, and uh, 
Why, why you looking it up? I'm gonna explain it. What happens is, I, I was reading, a, 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 I think it was a commentary or something. And what happens is when it says, it's like heaping, heaping, that's another word you could look for, like heaping coals of fire up on their head. Um, we think that, we look at it as like, yeah, okay, I ain't gonna say nothing, God get them. You know what I'm saying? That's the wrong attitude. You got it there? Yeah. What is it? Okay, and it has, um, it's in the New Testament too. You say Proverbs 25? Okay, Proverbs 25. Let's look at that. Okay, oh, that is a good one. Proverbs 25, 21. Look at that, 25, 21. It also talks about in the New Testament. And I'll get another time. Yeah, I think that's it. So hold on to that, and we're going to get to that one. Look at Proverbs uh, 25, 21. <laughs> Look at this, y'all. This love. <laughs> this love. If thy enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. Well, sometimes our response has been, I'm not going to say it is now. Our response has been, let him get his own food. Let him find something to eat. I ain't feeding him nothing. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. He talking about your enemies. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. And one of the, uh, um, one of the, the uh, things that, uh, terminologies, you said the other was Matthew 6. We're going to get over there. Oh, okay. All right, but that's okay. Um, they said when you hit coals of fire, it was one example said that as you show them love after they've done you wrong, it'll make them feel uh, condemned about the way they treated you. And the whole goal is to draw them to Christ. But sometimes our, sometimes our attitude is, oh, I'm gonna let the Lord get you. <laughs> when somebody when somebody do you wrong you know and our attitude our attitude is always supposed to be an attitude of love our attitude is to pray for them because sometimes we don't know why people act the way they act we know it's the enemy right we know it's the enemy but we don't know the layers that's up under there I thank God for Jesus because if I had not have gotten a relationship with Jesus at an early age, I would be in a mess because of things that had happened to me. My thinking was twisted. Amen. And that's what helps me. Uh, I know it's because of God in me and the mercy that God has had on me. Even while I was a sinner, God had mercy on me. I've been in situations that I could have been dead or messed up, taking stuff that could have took my mind that other people have taken and it sent them out and they didn't come back. You understand what I'm saying? But it's the mercy and the grace of God that I am who I am today. So that's why I have grace and mercy on other people. Amen, hallelujah. Because of the grace and love that God extended toward me, hallelujah. Glory to God. And when we keep that revelation, and sometimes I have, uh, in the past I have said, uh, I, and I may have given this example before, I remember, I remember, uh, I say I remember, I remember the time that, uh, you know, this is whew, back when I was 19, and before, just getting high, just getting high. You know what I'm saying? And and the thing is, is that uh, after that, you know, I done been saved a long time, and I, you know, saw somebody getting high, an older person. I was like, why are they doing that? This don't make no sense. And the Holy Spirit reminded me, remember, you used to do that. And if it wasn't for the grace of God, you'd probably still be doing it, and some. So it caused me to have mercy on people and to be long suffering to our people. Do it irritate you a little bit sometimes? Oh yeah, but you get over it. You use the word of God, amen, and do things the way that God tells you to do them. Somebody had the other scripture, Matthew. 
Okay, Romans 12 and 20. You know what, y'all? <laughs> Let me tell y'all something. Y'all help me preach the word then because these are the scriptures I had wrote down and I left the paper on the, because I was, you know, of course, doing it at the last minute. And uh, I left the paper uh, on the uh, dresser. Amen. Let's start at, uh, uh, but this show the right, let me tell y'all something, this show the right verse. Uh -huh. Let's start at uh, uh, um, number 14. 12 and 14, 12 and 14. It says, bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Y'all see that? Rejoice with them that do rejoice. He's talking to believers. 